Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is my review of The Possession of Hannah Grace. Just as I thought. Trash. Oh my gosh, the possession exorcism subgenre within horror is done, y'all. There is no life. There is no soul, there is no demon present in the subgenre any longer. To be fair, we still have the Conjuring franchise. We'll see how the third one in that franchise plays out. But outside of that, whew, it's a rough go of the exorcism style film over the past at least decade, possibly two. And the possession of Hannah Grace is not good. It is not better. It is not here to revitalize this dead body. It's here to just reinforce all of the negative energy this subgenre has brought to the horror landscape. But let's go ahead and give some due and talk about positives first. I will say that this film is called Possession and not The Exorcism Of because it is slightly different. This is a different story about a dead person who was possessed while they were alive that didn't get exercised properly and the spirit lives within the body still. Yeah. <laughs> but at least it's just not your average, what's wrong with our daughter? Priest, come in, exercise her, rid us of this evil spirit. Something a little bit different. It takes place fully in a morgue, which always sets up for a creepy atmosphere. And honestly, it's so frustrating because there is goodness hiding in the crevices here. And I think if this director were given a proper script, maybe he might be able to do something with it. I will say a lot of the directing choices still were a mess, but for a younger director and more a less experienced director, I think he really created atmosphere very well. It was like between the scares, between the big moments, between the times we're spending with this possessed body, that's when it's creepy. That's when it's scary. That's when it's able to build up that tension and use the surroundings to good effect. But then it just falls into horrible tropes. And honestly, that's all I got. That's all I have for positives for you. Let's go ahead and talk about what this film is really. The script is absolutely terrible. It is just laughably a bad script. Lines of dialogue that come out of these characters' mouths and the story it's a very, very packed story for a film that comes in under an hour and a half. And it takes place over the course of like two days, I think. Two nights this takes place. And we're supposed to start unraveling and doing all this craziness with this big convoluted story that's the basis for what we're watching. And we don't even touch on any of it. I mean, we're just literally told things and have to take them at face value and move on from there. Also, this takes place over the course of two nights and characters start getting like these funny inside jokes and these super close bonds and relationships even though they just met the person. Weird devices are put into this film that are completely unrealistic such as the lights. These are motion sensor lights in the film which, you know, cool, makes for obviously suspense building kind of stuff in horror. But these lights go out like as soon as you leave. <laughs> they give like no time. You dare stop while you're walking through the room. These lights are going to turn off on you. <laughs> I'm just like, what the heck? Why do they go off so fast? I would hate that. Hate it if I worked there. And then our demon. The demon in this film has like telekinetic powers. They pull the Darth Vader. I think she literally force chokes someone in this film. It's just as ridiculous. It's outrageous. While I think some of the practical effects to make like gashes and stuff actually looked pretty good, the, s the CGI and special effects on this like naked corpse as she like roams around is terrible. It's a scary movie that relies solely on jump scares and cliches. Cliches we've seen in virtually every other possession film. And it doesn't deviate off of said path. 
Our characters are stupid. Our characters are uninteresting. They are not very well acted. Their motivations are sketch at best. There's this subplot about using pills that I found actually highly disturbing because it's clear that this character was set up to have PTSD and they're making it out to seem like prescription pills are a bad thing for her. And I found that to be a very troubling message, actually. Alcoholism, yes, is a serious disease. And addiction to pills and the abuse of that is also a serious disease. However, this woman is not healed. This woman is clearly still very much going through PTSD. We don't really know how long ago this happened, that what goes down with her, but it's seemingly pretty recent. Um, and let her have her time. Like, if it's medication that she needs, clearly she does, don't shame her. And then the editing. Oh my gosh. We, whenever we're not just stagnant and trying to build tension that way, whenever someone basically moves, it's just all over the place. Like, da -da -da. there's a scene where we get to an incinerator with a few of our characters that is a crazy jump cut from one location to the next and it just gets wild from there. I mean, it was crazy to watch. Your, your mind is like scrambled from the leaps and bounds they just took. There's also this huge plot hole regarding the like D-Man and our main character and an implied connection that just never gets answered. So overall, as I said in the intro, unfortunately this movie is just as I thought a terrible film. It offers virtually nothing new to the horror landscape. It is a tired, old, not very well executed possession film. Apparently, if you've seen one, you've seen just about the entire subgenre. And this one will not introduce you to anything exciting, new, or fresh. So honestly, I think you can skip over the possession of Hannah Grace. If you're a horror junkie that like needs your fix right now as we go through a, a little bit of a dry spell through the Christmas season, wait for this to come free on TV or Netflix. You don't want to spend money on it. So that is my review of The Possession of Hannah Grace. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead, click like down below and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on our latest videos. Also, join in on the discussion. Are you excited to see The Possession of Hannah Grace or have you already seen it? If you have, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below or hit me up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!